What is up everybody out there in Heroclix land? This once again is Scott Porter back for video number two here on a Tuesday uh, for this new unboxing series for WizKids Marvel X-Men Rise and Fall Heroclix set. That is right, today uh, you get two videos. Normally you get a video on a Monday, but this, this Monday was a holiday, so you got two for Tuesday. You get two videos today. If you did not watch video number one, pause, go back, take a look. We unboxed some really, really cool figures, as well as the Play at Home kit, Deadpool, earlier in the day. We will wait here for you until you get back. If you watch that video and you are ready to go, so am I. Uh, I am so excited. I pulled a multiple man uh, in the first video, and uh, I, I bring a number of shirts with me for these videos. I usually just wear one for the week, but I wasn't sure with Rise and Fall, I don't have a Vulcan t-shirt. Uh, I wish I had a Havoc t-shirt. That's really what I, I, I need, and if I had one, I probably would have just worn that. But since I didn't, I wore Deadpool in the first video because I knew I was going to do the Play at Home kit. And then I pulled multiple man, man, I'm so glad I get to get to rock my Madrox shirt. I've never worn it in a video, so uh, I'm very excited. Uh, I'm so stoked. That Madrox figure was awesome. We pulled uh, Phoenix or Marvel Girl or Rachel Summers, whatever she is going by <laughs> currently. Uh, we pulled some really cool villains, Sebastian Shaw, Exodus, Mr. Sinister, Mystique, Eric the Red. I mean... This set is already touching on so many corners of the X universe, uh, as, as well as the galactic version of the X-Men. Uh, I am super, super excited about it. I know from the outside of the booster, we're going to get Corvus. We're going to get uh, some of the Imperial Guard from the Shi'ar. Uh, I, the image on the front, I mean, are, are we going to get Warstar? Are we going to get Smasher? Is that what we're going to have in this set? I hope so. I, I really do. That would be awesome. Impulse you know, was such a big player uh, with Vulcan. So uh, we'll see. Do we get those figures in this set? Do we get Lalandra? I mean, of course, we have to, right? Uh, do we get Deken, who we've never seen before, the deposed emperor of the Shi'ar? Uh, and then we, do we get the, the away team, basically? Uh, Havoc, Polaris, uh, Marvel Girl, Nightcrawler, Darwin was a part of that team as well. Uh, of course, we're going to get a Vulcan, we think. But then some of the storylines around it, it looks like we're, we're getting some traction as well as current day Jonathan Hickman, House of X, Powers of Ten kind of stuff. Are we going to get into Ten of Swords? I don't think it'll go that far, but we will see. I really don't know what to expect. I want to tell you right at the front of this video, this set that I'm unboxing right now uh, is set for a pre-release on June 9th and an actual full set release on June 23rd. So keep an eye out. Of course, days are subject to change. Uh, shipping channels are still pretty kinked up with a lot of what is happening in the world. So, uh, so please be patient if it does shift, but call your local gaming stores and your local comic shops and, and get in line for the pre-release and order yourself some X-Men mutant goodness here. All right, without further ado, let's start cracking these boosters open. Uh, I know some figures on the outside that we're getting, the Exiles, I'm super excited for. I hope it means we get a Thunderbird. We've never seen him before. You know, but the Exiles covered a bunch of different corners of the Marvel Universe as well. I mean, Power Princess was a member at one point. Uh, Sage, of course, was a member at one point. Psylocke took over at one point. Nocturne, who is such a cool character. Uh, the daughter of Mystique and, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, so our second video of the day. We, it looks like, just pulled. <laughs> yes! On the back of the boosters here, we have uh, what we believe is our chase theme, right? We, we have Infinity Warps. And, and we have Hex 23 back here, and Dupool, and Diamond Patch. And I was wondering who else could be a part of it. There's, there's a, a mashup with Mystique and Lady Deathstrike. Uh, Deathstreak, I think is what her name is. Uh, that could be very cool. Hex 23's father is, is a mix of Blackheart and Wingard, I believe. Um, or was it, was it High Evolutionary? Maybe it's High Evolutionary and Blackheart. I'm trying to remember that little offshoot thing. I mean, of course you had, uh, the Soldier Supreme, which was a mashup of Captain America and, uh, and Doctor Strange. 
You also had a mashup of, I think it was Thor and Iron Man. I mean, all of the characters in the Marvel Universe, but there were some mutant specific ones. Uh, well, we just pulled a chase. Uh, we just pulled our chase for this boost. Usually, I, I pull it on the last day, but today, that is not the case. Let's see what else we got in here first, and then we'll look at our chase. Uh, we got Warpath, which I'm very excited about. Here we go. Uh, let's see. We also got, is this a Broodling or a Brood Queen? Broodling. We got a Brood here. Alien race that tries to just pop eggs into everybody and take over planets. We got Polaris. Very excited to see. We also got, yes, awesome. We also got Shadow King. Now I'm super excited about him because there is a revelation that we just saw and I think it's Zeb Wells who's writing New Mutants currently. We just saw a huge revelation when it comes to Shadow King and we'll talk about it when we go through his figure. Really, really cool. And we got our chase. Our chase is actually Speed Weasel the little sister or little clone of Hex 23 of Laura Kinney's mashup in Infinity Warps. So uh, Chase and <laughs> Booster 3, before we even pull a super rare, we pop the Chase. That is awesome. We'll have to take a look at what Speed Weasel does in just a little bit. I think we'll hold her till, until the end of the video. Guys, can you blame me? Come on, really, honestly. Uh, so, we got a generic brood here, and the brood have made an appearance now in Hickman's run, but we know them specifically from their very first storyline. Uh, there's a lot of space horror that goes on, very alien-esque, right, the brood. And uh, they, they plant eggs inside of people, they can control those people that they plant eggs inside, eventually they, they hatch into the brood themselves. Uh, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Nasty. You got Brood. They got Brood, Animal, and Monster. Set number 14. Comes in at 15 points. Skittering, Impale, Poison Stinger, Exoskeleton, Devour. Let's turn the card over here. Take a look at what we got on the back. There's no triggering uh, traits or special powers. It is pretty simple and straightforward. I wonder if we get the Brood Queen in here. We got Brew yesterday. Now we got the Brood uh, I bet you we're going to get a Brood Queen in this set now, which I also wasn't expecting. Not a part of Rise and Fall. Uh, it is a part of the X, like the, the galactic X-Men mythos, right? So I should have seen it coming. But when we get a Brood Queen, I bet you that Brood Queen will, uh, will make some Brood and uh, will have some interesting tactics uh, that it applies to the game. Uh, let's move on. Let's go with one of the members of the away team, Warpath, who also comes in the Fast Forces, uh, but this is the main set version. You got Warpath with Hellions, New Mutants, Weapon X, X-Force, X-Men, and Warrior. This is James Proudstar, little brother of John Proudstar, the original Thunderbird. Has the rally trait. Now we saw this in the last video, but I'll explain it here again. Opposing attack rolls. Stealth, free. Remove Warpath's rally die to make a ranged attack with a five range using improved targeting hindering look at that he gets to throw his dagger for free a free ranged attack by using a rally token now how do you get rally tokens what does that mean you have a red uh you got a red shape around the trait you've also got a die that has a five on it which looks like an x of course but let's flip it over and we'll explain how the rally trait works for the first time today rally once per roll for each die in a finalized attack roll and for all characters with a matching rally die and trait color printed under their trait star, after resolutions, you may choose a friendly character to gain a matching rally die. Rally trait colors specify which attack type they can gain rally dies from. Blue, friendly attack rolls. Red, opposing attack rolls. Or green, all attack rolls. When a character gains a rally die, place a die with the matching result onto their card. Okay, he's got charge, he's got blades, toughness, exploit weakness. Blades exploit at 50 points with a little bit of outwit on the end of the dial. We'll take a look at the front one more time here and you see it's got that red behind, which means only on opposing attacks. Uh, but yeah, opposing attack rules. Stealth, which is traded, and then free, remove warpaths, rally die to make a range attack with a five range with improved targeting. Boom. So that's a free attack and then he can charge in. 
soften them up by throwing one of these knives, run in full force, do some damage on the back half of it. Very, very cool. Warpath was an interesting choice to go on this mission. It threw me a little bit when it happened, but it made sense also in a way. Here we go. We got Polaris is the next member of our away team also has the rally trait. Very cool. I'll toss her costume in here as well. She has acolytes, horsemen, star jammers, X-Factor, and X-Men. Very cool to have acolytes in there. We've already pulled Exodus. We're having a little play nice with a couple of sets ago with Dark Phoenix and the animated uh, series, the X-Men, the animated series, Dark Phoenix Saga set because there's a ton of acolytes in there, but there still are some missing. I hope we get a few more of them. I played the Acolytes a lot when I was on location uh, shooting my show Ginny in Georgia and Toronto. Shout out to 401 Games and all the players there. Incredibly nice, super, super competitive scene though. Uh, but I played the Acolytes a lot and they did pretty well, I gotta say. So I'm interested to play them now with the new Exodus and with Polaris here. That's awesome. Acolytes keyword in play. Rally. Opposing attack rolls. Free. Remove Polaris's Rally Die to knock back a character within range and line of fire five squares in the direction of your choice. Nice little layer of, uh, of strategy there. We'll take a look at the back of the card. Of course, there's the Rally explanation. She has telekinesis, some sidestep to get herself in position, energy shield deflection, which is a lot more valuable now uh, in the new scheme of the new rules, right? Because you can't be perplexing, or you won't find perplex in this set or the last set. So... Finding those way to bump, positively bump your own uh, combat values is super, super important. So energy shield deflection actually is, uh, is really, really valuable right now, in my opinion. You know, yes, we have a new, new rule book out. A lot of the powers and abilities have changed their wording, how they interact with each other. Uh, it came in a set that was uh, the distinguished competition set across uh, the aisle from Marvel, but uh, it all still applies to this set as well. We also know that we've had the benching of some powers, Perplex being one of them. So that is what I'm referring to. Uh, there's a, a smaller set or pool of powers to pull from. Uh, so some powers that are hyperactive right now in the game uh, are getting a bump. Okay, let's move on to Shadow King. Can't wait to talk about this guy. Okay, he has Brotherhood of Mutants, Dark X-Men, and Past. Really cool that Dark X-Men is in here. 100 or 40 points. Comes in at set number 46. Has a trait. All that remains. Shadow. Mind control. When Shadow King uses it and hits, after resolutions, heal him one click and give each hit character a servant token. Special defense power, and I will be its king. Toughness, mastermind, but may choose a non-attacking opposing character with a servant token within range to become the target. If you do, after resolutions, remove that character's servant token. So, hit somebody, give them a servant token. Doesn't say that you have to have line of fire, they just have to be within range. So let's take a peek at what the range is. Eight range, triple target, mind control, and remember, healing on all of those successful mind controls. A lot of outwit on the top of that dial. Psychic blast as well, which allows you to use that outwit on something that's not a defensive power. Man, nasty. Look at that. But Really uh, a huge reason I'm super excited because, again, we're going back into the past, right? We're looking at Shadow King here. Uh, we're, we're looking at, uh, at Amal Farouk, and we realize, you know, the time he tortured Psylocke or the time he, you know, put Storm uh, in a box, right? You know, like, like all of these different things that Shadow King has done over the years, just how evil Shadow King is. But nobody ever thought he was a mutant. And then he showed up on Krakoa. Because, lo and behold, Amal Farouk is a mutant. The Shadow King is a separate entity from him. He is a mutant himself. So he showed up on Krakoa because all mutants are welcome. And uh, there's a really cool storyline that's happening over in New Mutants right now. You know, of course, Karma uh, has a huge history. Uh, that would be really cool to get some of those New Mutants in here as well. Uh, get Karma. Get, actually, uh, Speed Weasel is a combination of Honey Badger and Quicksilver. I didn't say that when I showed that figure, uh, but in Infinity Warps is Honey Badger 
and, uh, and, and Quicksilver and Honey Badger actually is a member of that New Mutants team. So maybe we'll get a Honey Badger. I, I think she's actually calling herself Scout now, though. I think she changed her name. Dakin named her Honey Badger, and I think she's coming to her own. But maybe we'll see some of those characters. Dakin, or maybe Scout, maybe some of those New Mutants that are in that storyline because we got Shadow King, and uh, he's relevant currently in the actual current storyline as well as being a, a nightmare from the past, uh, pun intended, for a lot of the X-Men. Very cool pull. I'm not going to go into Speed Weasel right away. I want to see what else we pull today uh, because rarely do I pull a chase on day two. Usually we end up with a chase uh, around the end of the week, but man, woo! And I say day two loosely. It's, it's video number two because it's a two for Tuesday. Beam, beam, beam. All right, let's see. Oh, you know, I have the weirdest habit of, of talking about characters and then somehow they show up into the next booster. Uh, it shows me that my, my spidey sense is on uh, a little bit. Here we go. This is a great booster, actually, to tie into Speed Weasel. Uh, I love when it happens like this. I love when a plan comes together, right? Uh, first and foremost, we have Sentinel here. Single base. Uh, we have Sabretooth, who I talked about earlier. Member of the Marauders. Um, back in the day when we first meet him. I, I, I think... I think Sabretooth actually appeared in, in a Captain America comic before ever appearing in, in X-Men, but, but still, uh, we'll get into how we really know Sabretooth. Dakin just showed up. We was just talking about Honey Badger, and, uh, and then Dakin shows up. We've got X-23, and you know this makes me happy. We pulled an Iceman. He's in the set. I mean, maybe he's just easy to make. You don't have to paint him, right? You just create an Iceman out of this translucent uh, <laughs> plastic. But I love, look at his, look at his little, uh, he's doing this. Uh, he's doing this. I'll show you in, when we actually look at the figure. Uh, that's so cool. Uh, I, didn't, I, did, I didn't expect another Iceman. I'm always happy when they give me one because he's my favorite character of all time. Uh, he is the one for me that got me into comics really back in the day. So super excited to have him. You know, let's go ahead and take a look at him, actually. Iceman. Iceman has champions, defenders, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, X-Men. Wait a minute. Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. That's awesome. There was an organized play event that really dealt with the schism aspect of things, right? It was, it was Wolverine and his students, Cyclops and Utopia. And Utopia was a keyword that was only used that summer. And Jean Grey School for Higher Learning was also used that summer for that OP event. And now it's making an appearance in main sets. That is rad. Uh, you can see his little, you can see what he's doing with his little hand. He's like throwing up the, like the rock sign. That's, he's like, yeah. Oh, man, I love Iceman. Okay, anyway, Champions, Defenders, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, and X-Men has a trait. It is Rally, opposing attack rolls. When Iceman makes an attack after res resolutions, you may remove his Rally die to give each hit character an action token. So acting as free end cap there on the back side of it if you pull that. Never fear the Iceman is here. I said chill. No, really, my abs totally look like this. <laughs> Talk to the wall, bro. He's got Defenders and X-Men. You can see that rally trait back there, what I explained. He's got running shot, end cap. So wait a minute. He can end cap, and then you can pull his rally die to give that character another token? So you hit with end cap. When Iceman makes an attack, after resolutions, you may remove his rally die to give each hit character an action token. If you pull his rally die... Okay, guys. Uh... Brains jumbled sometimes. I don't know if it works, but is that basically saying if you have a rally die, you make the attack with incapacitate, you hit, resolutions, uh, you know, resolve, they get a token from incap, then you can pull that rally die and double token them? If that's true, that Iceman is really, really great. Um, even if it's not, it's, it's pretty good, but... I don't see the point if he's got in cap the whole way. I guess if you're doing damage, right? You want to do damage? That's fine. I, I got to... Hold on. Let me check. Let me check. Here we go. Consulting. Consulting the book. When this character makes an attack, instead of normal damage, you may give each hit character an action token. Yes, I believe that works. Rules? Rules moderator in chat? Please let me know. I think it works. Woo! 
Okay, Sentinel. Let's look at the Sentinel here. Sorry about my little tangent, guys. I apologize. <laughs> Sentinel. Sentinel, armor, and robot keywords. Uh, you have set number eight, comes in at 25 points, has a trait responding to the mutant threat. Sideline active. Once during your opponent's turn, if they hit with three attacks or two attacks made by characters with the X-Men keyword, after resolutions, you may place a sentinel from your sideline on click number one in your starting area. Oof. Return for repairs. When Sentinel is KO'd, instead of putting it in your KO area, turn them to their starting line and add them to your sideline. They are still scored, but they're only 25 to take out. Let's take a look at the back of the card here. Three clicks long, sidestep, end cap, six range, two targets, doing two damage until that last click. But still, when you KO them, they can go back to the sideline. And if you make two attacks and actually hit with an X-Men keyworded character, you can pop another Sentinel onto the map. Depends on how many times you would want to do it. But if you wanted to stack your sideline with like nine of these things, you can do that. Uh, that is kind of cool. I like the way they just keep on coming. Sentinel just keep on appearing. It seems to always happen that way in comics too, right? The clarion call goes out and then all of a sudden Sentinels from all over the world turn and they're like mutant identified and they start flying to mostly New York because that's almost where every battle happens. But you know, uh, sometimes San Francisco, I guess. But uh, all right, let's look at Dakin next. Dakin has Brotherhood of Mutants, Dark Avengers, Dark X-Men, Horsemen, X-Factor, X-Men, Monster, and Warrior keywords. Muramasa Coated Claws. When Dakin hits, give each character a poisoned token. Characters with poisoned tokens can't be healed and can't use stop for the rest of the game, even if this ability is lost. Look at that. Okay, so Silver Bullet for stop clicks. I mean, he comes in at 70 points, so he's pretty expensive. Uh, I didn't say he's set number 49, but still, ignoring stop clicks is huge in some cases. Has a special movement power. Won't see me coming. Charge, sidestep, stealth. When Dakin uses charge while he occupies hindering terrain, he does not have his speed. He's coming out full dial charge or full uh, movement charge of nine He's got a nine charge if he's planted in hindering terrain before he comes out. Uh, you can see his attack values there is 11s uh, at the top of the dial, three natural damage, plus he has blades. And he can poison you and make you ignore that stop click that you have. That is pretty impressive. Uh, I'd play him. Can't be healed, so he, he completely counters the X-Men team ability and... Uh, ignores all those stop clicks, which we haven't seen a ton of in this set, but I'm guessing that I'm guessing we're gonna have some show up. Let's look at X23, big sister to uh, the Honey Badger. X23 is Weapon X, X Force, X Men, Assassin, Martial Artist. Set number 31 comes in at 80 or 50 points. Pretty beefy. Built to be the best as a trait, she has toughness. At the beginning of your turn, heal X23 one click. Oof at the beginning of every turn. just You just get to heal naturally. You got nature and nurture, charge and stealth, limping but lethal. Uh, just because I can heal doesn't mean I want to heal. Look at the back of the dial there. 11 movement, 11 attack, close combat reflexes. Yeah, she's pretty nasty, especially when you think about the fact that if you don't KO her, she's gonna get a click back the next turn. The turn after that, just click back, click back, click back. Uh, really, really impressive. All right, last but not least, Sabretooth. I want to talk about Sabretooth for a second. Sabretooth we first meet in the Mutant Massacre, right? As a member of the Marauders. Now, he had made an appearance in Marvel before that, but as of that issue, him and Wolverine become just mortal enemies. Just arch enemies all the way. And from that, you spin out and learn a lot about Sabretooth's history with Logan, uh, he is a constant. He has been a constant. He is brutal. He is Wolverine without the conscience. He is a full animalized version of Wolverine. And you've seen him kill time and time again, which is why on the island of Krakoa, he was rescued from sentencing, basically, in a, in a human court by... Who was it that walked in and tried that case? Can't remember. Anyway, ends up going back with Magneto, 
They present him to the quiet council. The quiet council makes a ruling, and they decide that he is too dangerous to their cause of the new mutant nation finding their own independence and their safety, um, that he will just mess everything up. So they drop him into the belly of Krakoa, into a dark, silent place where he's basically put into stasis by the island. And that's where he's, he's sent to. That's how bad of a dude he is, is that at the end of the day, uh, we don't know where, I think Celine, the Black Queen, we don't know where Celine is, but she might have suffered the same fate. Uh, I may have missed it. Uh, but up until I have finished reading or up till the last issue that I've read, uh, we don't know where she is yet, but she could very well be in the belly of Krakoa too. But anyway, Sabretooth is that nasty. Let's look at his card. He's got Brotherhood of Mutants, Marauders, Weapon X, Animal, and Monster. 60 points, set number 17, has a rally. So it's not only X-Men, it could be villains as well. Opposing attack rolls. When Sabretooth uses Blade's Claw's Fangs before rolling the D6, you may instead remove his rally die to use it as the result. So you get a free five to use on Blade's Claw's Fangs, which is nasty. A high level of damage there. If you look at the back, he has exploit weakness on those first four clicks to go with his blades, that natural 12 attack, he gets flurry on the third and fourth and fifth clicks, working in conjunction with the blades. So massive damage potential, massive damage potential from this saber tooth. That is pretty great. We are getting a lot of villains so far in this set. Uh, I don't know if we're going to start to get more heroes, uh, but if we don't, what we're going to do today as our little bonus is open our fast forces set. Um, we saw, let's see, today we saw Warpath, we've seen Polaris, we saw Rachel yesterday, so we've seen some of the away team in their main set form, but what do they look like in the Fast Forces? Let's take a peek, if I can, yeah, me against Plastic is, I just always lose, I lose. Plastic has a superpower against me ever being able to open it, apparently, successfully. Um, let's break these guys out. Like I said in the first day, or the first video, uh, we are missing Nightcrawler from this group. But we have Professor X, who coming out of House of M, uh, is depowered. We have Polaris, who was on the run as a criminal at the beginning of Rise and Fall. They go and extract her. Uh, we have her longtime love, Havoc, who is kind of the field leader for this team. I've always loved Alex, and it's not just because him and Scott grew up in Nebraska, which is where I'm from. Okay, maybe it has a little something to do with it. We have Darwin, who is incredibly powerful in his own right. And then we have Warpath. So let's see, take a good look at all six of these. And then we'll take a look at their cards. So we've got six figures here that we got to get through uh, in a hurry. But we'll see what they add up to because as of late, we've had very playable teams that you can pull out of Fast Forces and play them right away, which I think is really cool for accessibility because that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to make this game attractive, not only people who love this game and have played this game for years, but also get new people interested. And if you could sell them a pack that they can play with a team right out of it, uh, it's, it's really, really good. Let's look at Professor X first. Professor X, X-Men team ability. X-Men headmaster, leadership. When Professor X uses it and succeeds, you may give an adjacent friendly character with a rally trait a rally die. Ooh, an extra way to get rally tokens that doesn't have to come from an opponent's roll. Uh, that's gonna be big, actually. Giving rally tokens to fellow X-Men, that's gonna be huge because there's a lot of really awesome rally powers that we've already seen. Take a look here, it is a little odd. He does get mind control there. He's stealth at first, gets mind control. So what I think happens here, if I can, if I can digress for just a second, uh, I wanna talk about Deadly Genesis. Professor X sends the original team of X-Men, right? Cyclops, Beast, Angel, uh, Marvel Girl, and Beast. All sends them all, as, as well as Polaris and Havoc to Krakoa. Uh, he sees a mutant energy signal, says we need to go to this place. 
Turns out it's a trap. They end up fighting this giant monster. The monster traps them. Turns out the Kokoa is a living mutant. It's a whole island and it feeds off of mutants, right? So it starts feeding off of them. He goes to Moira McTaggart, Professor X does, freaking out. He's like, Moira, you've got a team of mutant students. Uh, I need them. I need to send them to this island to rescue my team. Now, it was Vulcan, Darwin, and then Petra and Sway. It's a team of four students. They were studying under Moira McTaggart. She was studying them, and they were uh, part of her student academy, her, her mutant academy on Muir Island. He sends them. Sway and Petra get killed. They're back now in the books in Hickman's run. Um, and it's believed that Gabriel Summers, Vulcan, dies as well. He doesn't. Darwin saves him. Uh, but then... Professor X forms the giant size X-Men. He goes and finds Colossus and Thunderbird and Nightcrawler and all of them. He puts them all together. Wolverine, he sends them with Cyclops, uh, who, is, who escapes. And, and how he thought he escaped was he thought Krakoa just let him go uh, because Professor X changed his memories. What really happened is Vulcan saved him. Gabriel Summers saved him, told him, I'm your brother. I'm here to save you. Uh, they puts him, on, puts him on the Blackbird and sends him back to the school because Cyclops can't fight. And then they go back in to save the rest of the X-Men. Um, so that's what happens in Deadly Genesis, right? Then we know the rest of continuity the way that we know it. Then House of M happens. Scarlet Witch says no more mutants. Depowers millions of mutants. There's only 198 left with powers. Professor X is not one of them. Uh, Gabriel Summers, after this like huge energy thing, wakes up in the middle of space because at the end of that Krakoa, uh, fight at the end of that storyline, uh, Jean Grey basically uses her telekinesis to throw Krakoa into space or a part of Krakoa into space. And Vulcan is, is on that part of the island. Darwin, Darwin wraps himself around Vulcan, saves his life. They come back, and that's where we end up into Rise and Fall. You know, Vulcan comes back, he kills Banshee, he makes all the rest of the X Men realize that Professor X has been lying to them for years and years and years. Cyclops kicks Professor X out of the school, says, You're not fit to teach anymore, you're not fit to lead, get out of here. And then Alex feels like, You know what, we gotta go after him. Even though he's bad, even though he came here, he killed people, Gabriel Summers is still my brother, and I feel a responsibility, especially if he's going into Shire space to, to get revenge. Now, uh, we'll talk more about that. If I pull the Vulcan, why does Gabriel Summers want revenge on the Shi'ar uh, Empire? We'll save that for a later episode. But that puts us into this away team, basically. Professor X gets Havoc and Rachel Summers, Warpath on his side. Darwin wants to go because he feels like he has to save Vulcan. They go save Polaris. They steal a Shi'ar spaceship that's on Earth at uh, Eric the Red's old facility and they take off into space to go after Gabriel Summers and hopefully stop him from annihilating uh, the entire Shi'ar uh, empire. So that's what this away team is built around. At the end of that storyline, Professor X gets thrown into the McCran crystal and somehow the crystal gives him back his telepathy. So that's why I think he gets mind control on his dial just a couple of clicks in. I thought he was going to be completely depowered, uh, but this seems to be maybe at the end of the Rise and Fall storyline, which is why he gets mind control back on the backside of this. There we go. I digress. I explained the story to everybody for, in case those of you that haven't read it. Uh, it's worth a read. Brubaker, uh, Ed Brubaker wrote it. He is way, way good at smaller espionage stories, uh, crime noir, stuff like that. Galactic isn't really something he writes a lot, but it's still a cool story nonetheless. So I, I do suggest going to read it, but read Deadly Genesis first. Okay. Let's see. Let's take a look at uh, Polaris next. Set number five, 50 points. She has a rally trait. Free, remove Polaris's rally die to generate a light or heavy object. Okay, so she can pop out an object, then you can use TK for it. You can do whatever you need to pick it up uh, with one of either characters because everybody can carry light objects now. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I think that's what's going to happen, actually. I don't think we're going to have a lot of other powers. We're just going to have rally-specific powers here, which I'm cool with. Havoc next. Havoc has Star Jammers and X-Men. Havoc comes in at 50 points as well. So Professor X came in at 40. Polaris at 50. Havoc at 50. His rally trait is whenever Havoc makes a ranged attack, you may replace a die in the attack roll with this rally die. Okay, so you can toss a 5 in, right? So say, you know, you need a 9 to hit. You roll a 4 and a 3. 
You drop that three out and replace it with the five. You got a nine. Boom. You hit. Very cool. Okay, let's look at Warpath next. Warpath comes in at 60 points. So that balances Professor X's 40 point uh, cost. James Proudstar has X Men keyword. His rally, whenever Warpath makes a close attack, you may replace a die in the attack roll with this rally die. So, same as Havoc. I'm not sure we looked at the back of Havoc's card, so I'll bring it back into play here just so we can take a peek at it. Uh, Havoc's got Psychic Blast there. Got a little Blades from Warpath. Pretty straightforward dials. And this is exactly, I think, what we need in a Fast Forces pack. I think it's a playable team right out of the pack. Pretty simple synergy. They're helping each other out. Professor X can be giving them rally tokens if he's successful with his leadership. Uh, that's pretty cool. Let's look at Marvel Girl next. Her rally trait, power. Remove Marvel Girl's rally die to give an action token to an opposing character within five squares. Okay, so you can token somebody for free. She also has end cap as well. I'm really hoping we get Corvus in this set. Uh, Rachel kind of finds happiness with Corvus. He's got a Phoenix blade. Like, her tattoo starts glowing when he's near her. They have a connection, is what I'm saying. And it was really cool to see somebody like Rachel, who's been adrift for so long, just trying to find out where she fits, because she's from an alternate timeline, Days of Future Past. Uh, but to see her kind of fit in with Corvus was really great. Darwin. Darwin comes in at 50 points as well. When an adjacent friendly character would take damage from an attack, you may remove Darwin's rally die to instead deal one unavoidable damage to Darwin. Okay, so much in the way that he saved Vulcan, he can save one of your teammates as well. Um, he is adaptable and he is kind of like the best offense is a strong defense kind of character here. He's got sidestep, he's got impervious on the back of his dial, gain some outwit. And there you have it. That is the fast forces. I think it's exactly what we need. They come in at 300 points. You can play them right out of the box. It's accessible, it's quick, it's uh, you know, a big part of the Rise and Fall storyline. So the theme is right on point. Uh, I'm very impressed with those figures, how they work together, the synergy that they have. That is awesome. And I think that's it. All right, let's, uh, I was kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Here we go. Uh, pull to chase. And uh, don't usually do this in the second video and definitely don't usually do this on the first day. But we pulled the chase, it is Speed Weasel. Uh, we will take a look at her card right here. That's right. Gavril Kinney, the cloned little sister of an Infinity Warps Hex 23, which is a combination of Scarlet Witch and Wolverine. This is the little sister, Speed Weasel, who is a combination of Quicksilver and Honey Badger. Okay? Looks so cool. Uh, very, very excited to have pulled this. Uh, let's take a look at her card. Defenders, Warp World, Weapon X, X-Men, Mystical, and Speedster keywords. Set number 66. Comes in at 60 points. Can't catch me, snail kissers. When Speed Weasel uses Blades, Claws, Fangs, or Super Senses, after resolutions, you may place her up to X squares away from her current square, where X is equal to to the D6 result. Ooh, so you roll that blades. Uh, whatever you roll, you just boink, you just bounce away, get yourself out of trouble. Run, 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 break, break, break. Charge, once per turn when Speed Weasel is given a close destroy action, after resolutions, she can use charge as free. So run up to a wall, break that wall, keep running right through it with a charge. Um, yeah. Take a look at the back, has defenders and Mystics, oof, that Mystics, that's uh, granted there, I think, by Hex 23. 14 move, so a 7 charge, 11 attack, 18 with Super Senses, exploit weakness to go with that Blades for when you need to get big damage on a target, and again, 60 points. So that is our chase. Uh, it's really an interesting storyline, so a lot of it is contained within Hex 23, right? Uh, her father is, I think, I think it's High Evolutionary and Blackheart, I think so? Or is it Wingard? I cannot remember exactly. Maybe it's Wingard and Blackheart. Um, scientist, Sarah Kinney, 
His wife is Laura Kinney's mom. They create Laura. The dad wants to do some awful things. The mom doesn't want that to happen. Dad kills the mom. And uh, Hex 23 becomes a big time hero uh, in the, uh, the storyline of Infinity Warps. Uh, this little self-contained uh, pocket universe, folded universe storyline. And with her dying breath, the mother tells Hex 23 about her little sister and tells her she has to find her and protect her. I think that's why Speed Weasel has uh, mystics here for sure. Also with the Defenders, they form a team uh, within the book. And uh, yeah, there you go. You've got a lot of these amalgam characters, these, these smushed characters. It's just two, two characters just forced into one spot, you know? And uh, that's because the universe folds in on itself. It's all Gamora's fault, but it gave us cool characters like Speed Weasel. It gave us an awesome chase like Speed Weasel for this set. So there we have it. Uh, we are done with today's two unboxings. You can find this set out in the wild June 9th for the pre-release, June 23rd for the set release, but keep in mind dates could shift depending upon all the difficulties out there in the world. Um, tell me in the, in the comments down below, what is your favorite X-Men story of all time? This set is based around Rise and Fall. But I would like to know what storylines you really love. And if there's a storyline that, uh, that Heroclix hasn't based a set around, uh, if you would like to see that. So Inferno, perfect example, right? Would you like an Inferno set? Tell me what your favorite X-Men or mutant related storyline is uh, down in the comments below. And let me know uh, what set you would like to see uh, Hero Clicks base a set around because WizKids went back in the vault a little ways to rise and fall. I mean, we're talking a storyline that happened, what, 13, 12, 13 years ago? And we're getting it now, and it's bringing some of these older characters up to date into modern play, and I think that's really, really cool. So let me know in the comments below uh, what storyline would you like to see. I want to say thanks to Hyper RPG for allowing me to pop by, use their giant screen behind me, uh, and, and utilize their studio space. They are the best partner around. And if you didn't know, we did a little event called Hero Clicks for Huntingtons, and uh, we immortalized the old Hyper RPG Studio in a map. Uh, if you go to HeroClicksForHuntingtons.com, uh, you can click on a link and you can purchase that map, actually, uh, for charity until the end uh, of May. And then uh, maybe we'll run it actually a little longer. We'll, we'll run it a little longer, but every cent goes to charity. It's wonderful, and it's Hyper RPG's old studios, actually. Uh, make sure you find Hyper, Hyper, Hyper RPG Studios online on Twitch or on YouTube. Uh, they cover everything from tabletop gaming to video games to pop culture. They have archived a hero click show called Indomitable that yours truly was a part of, so make sure you check out all of their content. Uh, and if you get hungry, they're actually doing some cooking stuff right now as well, uh, which I watch and then try and imitate and make something less tasty than they do. Uh, but uh, the family appreciates it. <laughs> I want to say thank you to WizKids for sharing this set with me early so I could share it with you. And most of all, I want to say thank you to you. The HeroClix community is uh, your family with me now. We've been doing this for a long time and I'm so excited. Every time I get to open a set, it's like Christmas morning and I get to share it with all of my friends around the world. That is you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed everything that we pulled. Uh, uh, at this point, I'm not even going to speculate what else we're going to pull because it's all corners of X-Men happening right now. Uh, I am excited for some of the figures we saw on the outside of the box. We haven't pulled any Exiles yet. Definitely can't wait to see some of the Exiles. I want to see some of the Imperial Guard from the Shi'ar uh, Empire. I definitely want to see Gladiator, Smasher, you know, Warstar, all those guys. Impulse. Uh, hopefully they're in the set. Hopefully we get to see a good amount of them because we haven't seen a lot of them before. And uh, the ones that we have seen, we haven't seen in a while. Anyway, uh, I will see you back here tomorrow for video three and day two of our Heroclix unboxing. And until I do, may all your roles be critical hits.